Hi friends, my name is Becky and my pronouns are she and her. And my name is Steve and my pronouns are he and him. Welcome to Hope Collective Church where our mission is to develop inclusive communities where people discover sacred worth and calling. And our four core values are empathy. We see people as people, not as objects, not as obstacles, but people just like we are. Inclusion. We invite everyone to participate fully in our ministries regardless of the false walls that tend to separate us, including sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender identity, politics, economics, or race. Trust. We are who we say we are. Over time, you'll see that's true. If your trust has been broken by a faith community before, we understand that's okay not to be okay. And humility. We are confident in our calling, but may acknowledge that we are one church among many in which God is using to reach this community. If you haven't already given a thumbs up or say hello in the comments so that we know you're with us today. Also invite everyone to visit our website, hopecollectivechurch.org, where you can reg register your attendance, leave a prayer request, and make a financial contribution. Thank you so much for your continued support. As a reminder, on May 29th, we will only offer worship online and not in person. This will give all our ministry volunteers a little break and extra time away with family. Pride is coming up June 3rd through 5th and we need your help. We're a major sponsor for this year's Dayton Pride Festival and we will be participating in many of the weekend's festivities. If you are interested in helping, please email Kim Petty at kpetty at hopecollectivechurch.org for more details. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, let's pray this prayer written by Mechtelet of Magdeburg. The words will be on the screen. I cannot dance, O God, unless you lead me. If you wish me to leap joyfully, let me see you dance and sing. Then I will leap into love and from love into knowledge, and from knowledge into the harvest, the sweetest fruit beyond human sense. And there I will stay with you, whirling. Amen. Let's, Let's worship, worship together, together, friends. friends.
Hi, my name is Shantae West. My pronouns are she and her. And today I have the privilege to tell you a little bit about myself. Pastor Amy is a friend of mine and she did a segment on Facebook where she went through her life story and talked about um, a lot of the issues and her struggles um, that she had throughout life and shared her godly moment and how she overcame um, those issues. As I was watching her, I was so impressed with her ability to just be open and honest and put everything out there for the public to see. Um, she was just the inspiration uh, for me to be able to, to do this today because uh, right now this is definitely stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm okay with just sitting in the background. I am going to share you share with you a lot about my life. Um, and I'm going to start about three years ago when I was walking through the grocery store. And I was doing my normal shopping and all of a sudden I had um, some issues with breathing. Um, and I started to slow down and uh, man, my, my chest started to tighten up and I ended up calling my sister and having a conversation with her. And during that conversation, um, I, I literally bursted out in tears and here I am in the frozen food section trying to hide my face. And um, I'm just crying uncontrollable at that at that point. And, and it was then I, I knew I needed some help. Uh, depression is not foreign to me. It's something that I, I dealt with in the past, but having a breakdown and anxiety attack, it wasn't, it wasn't in my vocabulary by any means. Um, I heard about it because of my profession, but I had never experienced it. I, if I showed any type of emotion, it'd be at behind closed door at home, definitely not in public. But I had a lot going on. Um, at the time, I was inspired by a relative, not a relative, but a co-worker at work. Uh, she had passed away um but before she passed we had talked about school and it was something I wanted to do and she encouraged me encouraged me to do it and so I was in school at the time um I was employed um uh, full-time I was single parent I was in the process of transitioning out of a toxic relationship um it was a lot of changes that were happening because of the pandemic I was overwhelmed a friend of mine, she told me, hey, girl, look, you have a right to break down sometimes. Um, we just need it. Uh, and this statement kind of brought a different perspective for me. Uh, I was always good at listening to other people's problems and trying to solve their issues. And I I put myself in the back burner a lot. Um, and, and despite of that, I always turned to God as my safety net. Um, I always um, prayed, and regardless of whether things happened uh, in my way, um, it you know came through in God's time and not mine. I had previously attended a church, um, and this is where I met Pastor John and Elizabeth. Um, I had met Rev, uh, Angie, and Mark Quivio, and Pastor Amy. Um, and I reached out to Mark Quivio after the Kroger incident. He had provided me with uh, the contact information for uh, Dr. Angie. Uh, and I called her. And she, Even though she knew who I was, um, she didn't really know who, who I was. But she welcomed me with open arms. During my time with uh, Dr. Angie, she had invited me to be a part of her Zoom uh, group. And it was during this time where, um, I mean, this was out of my comfort zone too, where I met with all these strangers online, uh, a lot were older and they were going through their own issues. Um, but it was a starting point for me to be able to put behind the secrecy, shame, and the judgment that had chained me for so many years and I started to tackle the issues surrounding my family culture of putting things underneath the rug and not addressing things um my mom she was from Philadelphia Pennsylvania um originally she was supposed to come with my dad and they were supposed to, to move here my dad ended up dropping us off and he he didn't come back um so here she was she was raising four kids in a two-bedroom apartment trying to figure out life in Ohio and, and it was difficult um, a lot of times we were left alone. There were times that we 
didn't have water. I've been borrowing water from the neighbors and filling the tub up. Um, our best food was having uh, some rice, uh, hot dogs and soy sauce. We thought that was the best Chinese food in the world. Uh, but we were always in survival mode. Uh, from the ages of 8 to 18, that was a lot of things that happened that were good, uh, but there was a lot of things that happened that were bad um, and uh, that contributed to some of the issues I had as an adult. And during that, those, that long time period, um, I was molested. Um, I was raped. Um, I had went down to Philadelphia at one point to try to figure out some things, and I ended up getting a physical fight with my dad. Uh, I had suicidal ideation. I was a product of, po of poverty. I turned to food uh, for comfort. Um, at one point in my life, I weighed over 300 pounds. I had low self-esteem. I gravitated towards relationships that were not healthy for me. I suffered from depression. I had a self-inflicted abortion. I have three beautiful kids, but all of them were, they're out of white black and um, they were with three different men. I have men issues. I have trust issues. Um, I felt unloved. Uh, but the most dangerous part is that I presented myself well. I mean, you would never know what was going on with me. I was good at masking my feelings and saying the right things at the right time. Um, and I realized I was hurting myself in the process, but I didn't, didn't know any other way. So... Attending Celebrate Recovery had provided me clarity. Uh, I started to gain skills and tools to maneuver through um, some of my past issues and to um, man, be set free from those issues. And I'm still in recovery. I'm still working on, on a lot of those things. Throughout the stages of my journey, I never stopped seeking wisdom. Um, even though a lot of things did happen, I was able to um, obtain my associate's degree, bachelor's degree, and um, my master's degree. I was able to myself be able to rise above um, poverty line, not have to worry about living in low income apartments or anything like that. Um, God has always laid a foundation for me. Um, he showed up through people and events. Um, I found that attending church is just not enough. <laughs> you definitely need to be involved in it. And um, uh, he, he just provides so much for me. I had a, a grandmother that was always loving. Um, I had a determined mom. I had my Ohio aunties that weren't by blood, but they made sure I was good. I had Pastor Brian who had laid an awesome uh, spiritual foundation for me um, during my younger age. Just, <laughs> I had friends, I had neighbors that all kind of accepted me for who I am, and no matter how ignorant or uh, whatever mistakes I made. This year, um, a little after actually I completed the Celebrate Recovery group, uh, Pastor Amy had called and wanted me to be a part of a women's group, uh, and we would meet on a monthly basis. And it was during one of our meetings that I had experienced the first time the ability to pray for over two hours. And in that prayer, man, it was so powerful. I I was able to really just let go um, of, and, and so many things that happened to me and just be able to seek forgiveness at a different level. I forgave myself, I forgave the people um, that did um, things to me. You see, mommy? One of the greatest gifts that God has given me is my kids. Um, my son would ever know that, man, he, he saved my life in a way. He, um, I was struggling at the time of his birth with wanting to not, not be here on his earth. Um, his birth allowed me the ability to, um, I wanted to break free from the past and break those generational curses. I have started to discover my spiritual superpower. Uh, and I know it's always been here. Um, those tools have always been available. I just don't know how to use it. And I know how to use it now. There is this picture that I have on my wall. And it says, um, they whispered to her, you cannot withstand the storm. But I whispered back, I am the storm. I know that I have 
the tools now to withstand any storm that comes my way. There's a parable or a scripture, uh, Mark uh, 4, 35 through 41, where Jesus is in the boat and his disciples are on the boat and um, it's storming and um, they're getting all hyped up. Like, you know, hey, you can go do something about that. You ain't scared. And Jesus, you know, he's like, man, I got this. You know, I I got this now. I had the tools to be able to get it. Uh, fear and faith, it, it definitely should not exist in the same uh, space by any means. We have to continue to work, uh, put our work in. We can't just attend church. We have to, to put our work in. Uh, we have to share our story in order for all of us to heal. Thank you for listening to my story. Hi, friends. My name is Andy. My pronouns are he and him, and I owe nearly my entire call to ministry to women. It was two years ago on Mother's Day that I was going to start a sermon with those words at Ailey United Methodist Church in Beaver Creek for their United Methodist Women's Sunday. But due to a global pandemic, it's taken two years, and what a journey it has been to be able to finally get here and say those words. When I was looking at the list of, of sermon titles and verses, today's verse spoke to me. And it wasn't until I told John that I'd be willing to preach today that I found out that it was Mother's Day. God is good. Would you please pray with me? Lord, bless all who daily strive to bring peace to their communities, to their homes and to their hearts, Give them the strength to continue to turn swords into plowshares. Where there is hatred, let us show so love. We pray for all of the women and all of those who face prejudice and inequality and gender disparities. Help us to see and to face the discrimination against the marginalized in all of the many forms it may take. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You heard me right when I, you heard me say that I owe nearly my entire call to ministry to women. Women like Val Brown, who was my youth pastor and the reason I went to Tar Hollow where I got my call to ministry. Kim Armantrout, who saw a calling in me and gave me a job with the church as the media spe specialist. Carly Snyder, Deanne Long, Deb Dunlop, Ashley Valentine Dare, the list goes on and on. And so who are some of the important women in your life that have helped you in your calling? Post them in the chat. Today's scripture tells us about a disciple that you may never have heard of. So let's jump right in into this week's scripture starting in Acts 9 verse 36. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. There was a very important word used there. Did anyone catch it? Disciple. Tabitha was a disciple, something that many want to gloss over or act like it's not written there. But, they would um, but why would Luke make a point to call her one if it wasn't a norm at the time? The coincidence that this scripture was chosen for this week is not lost on me. Women are marginalized by the Big C Church all the time. That is, the church as a whole. And we see these acts of the Big C Church playing out right now in the U.S. But Luke made a point to talk about Tabitha. Not just because of what we're about to read, but because she was a disciple too. One can and should assume that Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others listed in the Easter scripture were also disciples of Jesus and that the twelve regarded them as such. But let's put a pin in that for just a moment and jump back into scripture with verse 37. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us at once, without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, 
And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All of the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing to, that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter heard that Tabitha had died and came to see her. There's no mention of him arguing or saying anything. He just gets up at once and goes with them. It's a lot like how Jesus came to Lazarus when Jesus heard that Lazarus had passed. This leads me to believe that Peter knew Tabitha well. They very likely traveled together with Jesus and got to know each other throughout their ministries. But what's even more amazing was what's about to happen. Let's read on in verse 40. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. Tabitha and her ministry meant something to Peter. To the saints, to the widows. Why else would he come so quickly when called upon? But it obviously goes deeper than that, because he did what he saw and witnessed their teacher doing. As we read in Luke 8, read in Luke 8 verses 49 through 56, let's listen to the similarities between what Peter did and what Jesus did. Verse 49. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother to, to the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all of the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand, and he said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned at once, and she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Did you hear the similarities in those two stories? Going back to Acts, Peter sends everyone out of the room, just like Jesus, and says, Tabitha, get up. And then what happens? She opens her eyes, just like the girl at Jairus' house. It's amazing what can happen when we imitate Jesus, isn't it? Peter imitates Jesus just by raising Tabitha, Jesus by raising Tabitha from the dead. And as we saw earlier in Scripture, Tabitha imitates Jesus by showing love to others through good works and charity. We've all heard the saying, imitation is the highest form of flattery. But to be a disciple, you must imitate your teacher. We see this in all of the disciples throughout Scripture, and it's no exception here. Tabitha worked with, with widows and was likely a widow herself. She helped clothe and provide for those marginalized by the world, something that we see Jesus do time and time again. Luke uses the word disciple to describe Tabitha, but if we take a closer look at the Greek form, the Greek word that he used was methetria. And this is important to take note of because methetria is the female form of the word disciple. So he's not just slipping up or making a mistake, he's making a statement. He could have written the scripture and not included her name or her title. He could have said a widow, but he didn't. He used a specifically feminine version of a word to describe her, which means this is a word that was used daily. So who are some of the methetria that we know today? People like Shirley Deering, Lonnie Vikas, and Jenny Bass, who show up to serve breakfast and lunch to St. Paul Church. Marcia Florky, I see her witness in everything that she does through leading people all over the world in acts of social justice. Reverend Angie and her helping people discover or recover from addiction and always fighting for the underdog. The list goes on and on, and if I tried, to, tried not to miss someone, we would be here all day. But it's amazing how long the list of methetria at Hope Collective Church is, who are making a difference in the community through their good works and acts of charity. Luke made it a point to call out who Tabitha was and what she did. 
that means that when we when he was told the story from either pa Peter or Paul, this was how it was told to him. So, can I admit something to you? It wasn't until John mentioned a few weeks ago that I learned that Luke, and not Peter and Paul, wrote Acts. Now, I don't know how I missed this information, but it was news to me. Which is really kind of weird because Luke is actually one of my favorite books. But anyway, so when I learned this, I had to read further into what else I didn't know about Luke. So here are a few interesting facts. Many believe that Luke was mentioned, or sorry, many believe that Luke was actually part of the 70 disciples that were sent out by Jesus um, that he mentions in his, his book Luke, chapter 10. And it's interesting to me that in my second, this is my second sermon at Hope Collective Church, and I'm mentioning the 70 disciples again. And that was quite by accident, so I really need to look into that because I feel like God might be telling me something. <laughs> but here's another fact. Luke and Paul were close friends. And then here's the kicker, and why I'm kicking myself for not realizing that they were both um, written by Luke, the book of Luke and the book of Acts were actually companion letters written to the same person, Theophilus. The fact that Luke writes about Tabitha to Theophilus is no coincidence. It's actually poignant because I think it shows just how normal it would have been for a, for to call a woman a disciple because Theophilus would have needed to know that word. So he was mo so Luke was modeling after the way Jesus saw and treated women. When Mary anointed Jesus with a jar of pure nard, Judas is distraught and Jesus says, "Leave her alone." We see Jesus raising women up over and over again. The woman at the well, the woman who was about to be stoned, the woman or the widow of Nyan, the woman at the tomb. Jesus showed that he cared about women as equals and that he and he actually astonished the 12 by speaking to the women freely something that wouldn't have been normal at the time and he also valued the importance their importance by ministering to them directly Jesus was leading by example and so when the big C church abandons that what do we do we have to lead by example and be like Tabitha, Peter, Paul, and Luke. We're called to lift up the marginalized, those oppressed, those who are on the fringes of society, and to say, we see you, we hear you, you matter to us, and you matter to God. So on this Mother's Day, we honor Tabitha and her example of ministry. And I know I owe nearly my entire call of ministry to women who took up the call like Tabitha, the disciple, and spread the gospel to all corners of the world and to tell the whole world these three important words. You are loved. Amen. <laughs>
Hey friends, my name is John Morgan. My pronouns are he and him. And before we share communion together, I just want to give thanks for everyone who participated in today's worship. It does my heart good just to see so many people involved with our online ministry. And a special thanks to Andy Hill for uh, bringing today's message. Uh, we sure do appreciate, Andy, all that, all that you do for Hope Collective. Well, you all know you're, everyone's invited to participate in, uh, in communion today. We'll be continuing through our Eucharistic prayer book. Uh, the words that we'll pray together will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Creating God, you made the earth as a place of encounter. Here you made a covenant with your chosen people, and when your children went astray, you came among us in the form of your Son, showed your glory, and in his passion suffered for our sin. In him you brought every aspect of creation to its purpose. Your Son's resurrection empowered his disciples, and your Spirit's fire enlivens your church. You promise us that when our story with you is completed, you will inaugurate a new heaven and a new earth where we shall enjoy life with you forever. So with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, anticipating your eternal praise, we bless you in everlasting song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Redeeming God, you have prepared a banquet for us to share with you in your kingdom. Send now your Holy Spirit that we may taste that banquet today, that your Son may be present among us. The one who, when he was with his disciples, took bread and broke and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, remember and likewise, after supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood shed for you. It represents a new covenant between your Creator and you. As often as you drink of this, remember. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again transforming God in Christ and in this holy meal you show us the shape of your love in broken bread show us the cost of your love and inspire us to love like you in poured wine show us the, con the con constancy of your love and form us to love and truly as you love us remake your earth that it may breathe your life Remake its people that they may resound with your glory. Remake your church that it may look like your son. Wipe every tear from every eye. Make death no more. And take away mourning and crying and pain that all may find justice and mercy and freedom in your service until the beginning and the ending of all things are one in you. And you are all in one. God the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. God, we do give you thanks for holy moments like this each and every week, that we may draw closer to you and closer to one another. Continue to move us with your Holy Spirit, God, to the places, to the people, to all the ways that we can share your love with the world around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, friends. My name is Erin Bailey, and my pronouns are she, her. As we close out our service this week, we want to thank you for joining us and we hope the service has been a blessing to you. Andy wanted me to remind you that if you are in need of a prayer, please don't hesitate to send me an email at ahill at hopecollectivechurch.org or you can message him on Facebook. There are no small prayers and we are always willing to help pray for you.
And now, as we go from this place, may the God who hears be ever present to you, continuing to breathe a breath of hope into your broken places, so that healing and hope may flow through you and into the world. Go in peace. So in peace, friends, and remember above all else these three words. You are